welcome to another video by my channel in this video we will discuss iris so let's begin the iris iris is the interior most part of the uveal tract and it is a thin circular disc corresponding to the diaphragm of a camera it is just like a diaphragm of a camera in its center is an aperture of about 4 mm diameter called pupil which regulates the amount of light reaching the retina. Here you can see this is pupil and surrounding is the diaphragm. At the periphery the iris is attached to the middle of the anterior surface of the ciliary body. It divides the space between the cornea and the lens between the cornea and the lens into anterior and posterior chambers here you can see iris it has two zones a ciliary zone and a pupillary zone here you can see these are crypts peripheral crypts there is contraction furrow these are crypts and here this is pigment frill we now discuss it in detail first we will discuss macroscopic appearance anterior surface of the iris can be divided into a ciliary zone and a pupillary zone by a zigzag line called collarate so it is divided into a ciliary zone and a pupillary zone by a zigzag line called Collarate. This zigzag line, line is called collarate. Ciliary zone. It presents series of radial streaks due to the underlying radial blood vessels and crepes, which are depressions where superficial layer of iris is missing. So, ciliary zone contains radial blood vessels and crepes. Crepes are arranged in two rows the peripheral present near the iris root and the central present near the collarate. Here you can see peripheral crypts and they here central crypts near the collarate that is a zigzag line between ciliary zone and pupillary zone. Now we come to the pupillary zone. This part of the iris lies between the collarate and pigmented pupillary frill. Between the collarate and pigmented pupillary frill. And is relatively smooth and flat as compared to ciliary zone microscopic structure the iris consists of four layers which from anterior to posterior are first one is anterior limiting layer it is the anterior most condensed part of the stroma and it consists of melanocytes and fibroblasts so anterior limiting layer contains melanocytes and fibroblasts and this layer was called endothelial layer of iris which was a misnomer this layer is deficient in the areas of crypts and the definitive color of the iris depends on this layer. So there is a high real point that definitive color of the iris depends on this layer. Why? Because it contains melanocytes. In blue iris this layer is thin and contains few pigment cells while in brown iris it is thick and densely pigmented. Now we come to the <coughs> iris stroma. It consists of loosely arranged collagenous network which are embedded in the, in the sphincter pupillary muscle, dilator pupillary muscle, vessels, nerves, pigmented cells and other cells which include lymphocytes, fibroblasts, macrophages and mast cells. So iris stroma contains first collagen network, then muscles, sphincter pupillary and dilator pupillary, vessels, nerves, pigment cells and other cells such as lymphocytes, fibroblasts, macrophages and mast cells. Sphincter pupillary muscle forms 1 mm broad circular band in the pupillary part of the iris. It is supplied by the parasympathetic fibers as constriction of pupil is the function of parasympathetic fibers. The dilator pupillary muscle lies in the posterior part of the stroma of the ciliary zone of the iris. So, 
it its myofilaments are in the outer part of the cells of the anterior pigment epithelial layer and it is supplied by the cervical sympathetic nerves and it dilates pupil so dilation is the function of sympathetic nerve fibers so sympathetic nerve fibers supply dilated pupillary and it causes dilation of the pupil so this is all about the microscopic and macroscopic appearance of the iris hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and like this video